to go ahead and move into the NFC South. And this is the home of the Super Bowl champions who did not even win the division last year. The team <laughs> that right. did win the division is the New Orleans Saints, who uh, it, it's going to be a little crazy. It's going to be a year of transition because Drew Brees has retired. And I never understand really what they are doing with their drafts. But uh, but we'll go through what they need. And, and what they needed was a wide receiver, linebacker, cornerback, defensive tackle, and safety. And, you know, I mean, you can look at a lot of other things. I think a lot of this is going to hinge on whether or not Taysom Hill is actually a good quarterback or not. And, you know, if he's not, obviously you've already got Jameis Winston there. And yet they took Ian Book in the fourth round, and we'll we'll get to that. Here's the rest of what they ended up doing. Uh, first round edge uh, rusher Peyton Turner out of Houston. That one uh, got a lot of people shaking their heads trying to figure out exactly what they were thinking. Linebacker Pete Warner out of Ohio State in the second round. Not a big fan of that one. Uh, Pete Warner's not the most athletic guy in the world. Now, he, he's super smart, but he's old school. So, uh, Paulson Adebo out of Stanford, cornerback in the third round, fourth round. Quarterback Ian Book out of Notre Dame. Now, I know that Chris loves Ian Book, and we'll talk about it. But uh, sixth round, Landon Young, offensive tackle out of Kentucky. I like that pick. And Kawan Baker, wide receiver out of South Alabama in the seventh round, super late. And I do kind of like that. I think that kid's a stud. He was uh, really good for the Jaguars last year. Um I, I will go ahead and tell you this. I didn't really like the first-round pick. Now, I understand because of the measurables and everything else, and he was really productive at Houston last year, but it, it's, it was a two-star guy, and it's, it, stars don't matter. I get that. But it, still, he wasn't. He was never really looked at as a first-round guy until you started looking at measurables and whatever else. Like Nobody talked about him being a first-round guy until just a few days before the draft, really. He came in and was like 220 pounds, when he first got to Houston, hit a growth spurt and is like 6'6", 6'7", 280 pounds now. I mean, super big guy, large wingspan, all the stuff that you would want. And maybe he does turn out to be something good and they got a steal here, but even still, it seemed kind of strange. So even if you take that one away, the Pete Warner pick in the second round, I thought that was a little high for him. Uh, super smart guy, but not super athletic. Paul Snadebo, I love that one. Ian Book, I don't like that one as early as they did it. And then I do like Landon Young and Quan Baker. Now, I guess overall, I'm like, yeah, okay, like I, I, I like it. I guess it's it. This is a strange one for me. You, you guys, jump in. Yeah, it was strange because if from just the research I did on all these players, it seemed like they reached on every single player they drafted. Not even Peyton Turner was. You know, everyone had a second or third round grade on this kid. Same with Warner. Then you go down, then you get Ian Book. Now. So you're going to start Jameis Winston and use Taysom Hill as the sort of, just sort of like he was used last year, probably a little bit more because Jameis, I'm sure, will make some boneheaded plays and turn the ball over 20 times like he always does. So, but well, hold on. It, it, so I thought Taysom was going to be the, the guy. I Isn't he too. the guy? Sure I think it's going to be Jameis. I think it'll be Jameis, and they're going to use Taysom Hill like they used him last year. He'll be the switchblade type of guy. I think that's what you're going to see. Everything that, And it's really hard because they paid them both the same amount of money, right? So, like, yeah. what the hell is actually going on here? You're going to see them both play. That's what's going to happen. They're not going to pay Jameis $12, 13000000 million to be the backup and then and behind Taysom Hill. I think he'll be the first and second down quarterback, and you're going to see Taysom Hill in the red zone, and you're going to see him you know, doing little reverse plays and throwing it. Their offense is going to look funky next year. And that's why I'm looking like you need a wide receiver. So you lose Emmanuel Sanders. You have yep. Michael Thomas. Traquan Smith is absolute trash. He can't catch anything. He's absolutely <laughs> terrible. Uh, who's that little guy that caught a few passes? Uh, Davis. He's all right, but you have no one to throw to. And you let Jared Cook go. Jameis Winston's literally going to have to throw to Taysom Hill 10 times a game. I mean, that's what's – you're going to have quarterback to quarterback action all day long. That team's going to look really weird. I actually – thought this was one of the worst drafts in the league i didn't like in the league overall they're one overall, of the worst for me one of the worst yeah one of the five three four five worst drafts on the book and then ian book i mean might as well just sign jimmy clausen off the street and just bring him in because that's if you want a crappy <laughs> notre dame quarterback let's just get greg paulson or paulus whatever the hell his name was ian book hell let's go back and see what uh, brady quinn's up to maybe you can sign him and throw him in there rick myra might still have uh, some hair on top of his head let's throw him in if you want a crap Notre Dame quarterback, go do that. But uh, nah. Here, here's my uh, issue with cast. with Ian Book because I know that Chris loves Ian Book. My my issue with okay. Book is if it was a seventh round flyer or or even mm -hmm. maybe a, a sixth round flyer, I might could understand yeah. that. This team it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. But the Ian Book situation is it, you got can they get through their progressions? Like how do they process information? 
He's not great at that. It, like, he's a fantastic leader, so he's got that part. He's a good leader. Not super athletic, not super accurate, and doesn't really process information well. If you're not good at any of those three, how are you ever going to be a great NFL quarterback? I bet by the time he touches the field, he's one of the most accurate in the league. I bet I bet it's wow. two years. I bet it's two years before he touches the field ever. Okay. Because okay. they do have two guys that they're going to go back and forth with that they've paid a little bit of money to. And then yeah. Sean Payton, the best offensive mind in football, maybe. He's in the conversation with Kyle Shanahan, with yeah. Andy Reid. He is is absolutely somebody that you just have to trust that he's going to put his Sean Payton magic on him, all right, and not put him out there until he's ready. I, I think he has no problems doing any of the things that you said. He's just never really been asked to do them. Um, and I think he's going to be just <laughs> fine. I'm, well, not, I'm mean, not worried about that. that big game. He's from Notre Dame. Like yeah. Notre Dame doesn't win big games. So they're like, okay, this kid's that game not last right. year against Clemson wasn't a big game. Oh, well, one game. Okay, one big hey, game. Man, and then what happened game, later, though? dude? How didn't they lose they it playing? after? Didn't they lose after that though too? Didn't they lose to Clemson later? Or that, they, they got only smoked, lost right? to Clemson though. They only lost yeah. to Clemson. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. how many big games have they played in? And they don't lose all of them. But yeah, okay. So you're knocking them for losing to Alabama, <laughs> and you're knocking them to losing to Clemson. I love Who the hell else that, have though. they lost to? <laughs> that, that, nobody. Well, I mean, and, when you're playing like Kentucky or when you're no, playing, no, but you that's know, bullshit. They, play the hardest, they play the hardest schedule every year. Every year they play the single hardest schedule in all of football. Okay. It ain't close. Hey, hey Chris, tell me close, this. Tell me this. Hey, hold on, hold on. Uh, do, do you think he had a better offensive line at Notre Dame or will he have a better one with the Saints? Uh, he had a better offensive line at Notre Dame, but uh, Kyle Shanahan's never had an offensive line problem. Okay, or not Sean. Sean, Sean Payton. Payton's never had an offensive yeah. line problem, okay? Their offensive line's always going to be middle of the pack or better. They're going to yeah. be above average or to really good, okay? that That's not a worry or a concern at all. Do you think he's ever had a wide receiver like Michael Thomas in his life? Oh, not a chance. Well, of course not. Okay, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think some of his accuracy issues are going to go away by the time he touches the field. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Here's my problem with why I hate this draft. It, it, we talked about this before we got into the draft, Gary, um, and I can't even remember the team that we talked about it with. But it's it's like that old adage that they 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 buy good groceries, but they have no idea what things should cost. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know and so about. they just like grossly overpay for stuff. We, we talked about it with but, the Raiders. Oh, with the Raiders, that's it. It's like it's not that yeah. I hate their draft picks. It's that, that that they just have no concept of what things should cost, right? Like, how much is a gallon of milk? I don't know, twelve bucks. I, what? what yeah, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. they, they 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 think these players are good. They just don't have a concept of. I don't have to take him in the fourth. I can take him in the sixth. Like they just, Kyle does. I mean, uh, Sean just doesn't understand. He just doesn't know that. And, right. and so I knock him for the Houston pick because Gary and I talk college football. But I, I follow and listen to people that actually follow college football for a living. They are journalists. They they are in and out of these teams more than anyone else, and they didn't know Peyton Turner's name. They didn't know he existed on Houston's football team, and they covered Houston multiple times, like mm-hmm. big games. That That's a problem that's a little bit that's of a bad. red flag to me. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's the issue. Outside of Ian – I don't, and here's the thing. Yes, they grossly overpaid for Ian, but I'm yeah. telling you, you're remembering Notre Dame the way Notre Dame used to be. Okay. None of mm-hmm. those quarterbacks that came out of Notre Dame were coached by Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly is right. a completely different guy. He hasn't put many quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know if he's put any quarterbacks in the NFL until Ian, but he, he is the way Notre Dame has changed offensively and what he's able to do. I, I just think Ian's a smart quarterback. I do think he has plenty of athleticism. He's got plenty of arm. I think his accuracy is fine, and I think his progression is fine. I, I think they run a different offense than Sean runs, and I think Sean Payton's going to coach him up, and I think it's two years before he ever touches the field, ever. Not not even close to sniffing the field. We, uh, Jameis would have to do something grossly stupid for him to get on the field sooner than that. Yeah. But when he touches the field – Everybody, which is not out of the question. Which is not the out of the NFL, question. Everybody Whoa. in the NFL is going to know who he is. <laughs> okay. I, 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 knew, right. I know you love him, and that's I, I knew we had to talk okay. about it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.